I recently watched a Netflix documentary about minimalism and I was really surprised by the similarities that could be drawn between the concept of minimalism and the USMLE exams. And because of the overwhelming nature of passing the step 1 and step 2 CK exam can be paralyzing, I wanted to make this video to show you how minimalism can help you as a USMLE aspirant ace your exams. Let's start by explaining what minimalism means so you can really understand how this concept can really help you ace your exam. Minimalism is often defined as a lifestyle that involves intentionally living with fewer positions and commitments and focusing on what's important. The goal is to gain clarity and time by reducing clutter and noise. So you focus on owning what is important to you, what adds value, and you remove all the rest. Let's try to draw similarities around that for the USMLE exams. If you're studying for the USMLE exams, I'm sure you've went through a lot of noise from resources, materials, study strategies, study plans, distractions around you and that makes you more stressed and less able to focus on the exam. Focus on what really is important to get you the score you're looking for. And throughout this video, we're gonna go on a journey to apply minimalism to every aspect of you studying for the USMLE exams and see how this concept can really revolutionize the way you approach your studying and your exams. And let's start with the minimalism in picking your resources. A good example of applying minimalism in your life when people start to apply this concept in their everyday life is clothes. Most of us in our closet, there is so many clothes that we don't need, we don't use, but we still keep it in there. While the ones we actually need are very few. And the same apply for the resources of the USMLE exams. There are so many resources, so many books, so many question banks, but you have to focus if you wanna pass with ease on what is important, what is high yield, and throw out all the rest. And I have detailed videos and blogs on what resources are the most important when it comes to the step one, step two CK, that I'm not gonna go into detail now. I'll leave the link for that in the description of this video. So try to apply the minimalism concept when it comes to picking your resources and you will see how less stressful you will be because now you have much less things to study. You don't have to worry about studying 50 resources. You only focus on one or two that are very good and it would get you to the goal that you're trying to achieve. You'd have more time to master these resources and help you get your exam done much faster. Another point when it comes to applying minimalism for picking your resources is prioritizing the weak areas that you have deficiencies in. So for example, if you're someone who has difficulty studying immunology, for immunology specifically, you go and study maybe one additional resource. But don't go and study all the Kaplan books, for example, if you only have deficiency in immunology. Maybe focus on immunology for the Kaplan books and then go and study first aid or UWorld for the other additional subjects that you don't have much deficiency in. And that apply again to the idea of minimalism that I only acquire or get the things I actually need, not because other people have them, not because I saw some influencer recommend this resource, while in reality, I actually don't need it because I have a different base than that person who's talking about their plan or that person who scored 280 and they spent two years studying and I don't have that time. So to summarize the first point, be minimalist in picking your resources, only focus on the ones you actually need and will get you the score that you're looking for and tailor your study resources based on your weak points and your strength. The second advice when it comes to being minimalist on studying your USMLE exams is focusing on high yield concepts. So after you picked the best resources or the resources that will help you achieve your goal, you need now to focus on what is important inside these resources because not all questions are created equal in your world. Some questions might be repeated more often. Some questions are more relevant and more likely to show on the exams than others. So you can't spend two hours studying an extremely rare disease that's only shown one time on the U world or one time in the first aid and spend the same amount of time on a concept that is very heavily tested and might show on the exam. And here comes the art of applying minimalism when studying for the USMLE exams and any exams. And many people use it without knowing that this is applying minimalism when it comes to studying the high yield concepts. But the million dollar question is how do I know what topics are high yield and what topics are low yield. One way to know about that is after you go through your first round of 
UWorld or First Aid, you see the topics that are commonly shown multiple times throughout the resource, you know that this is more likely to show on the exam. In general, very rare diseases are less likely to show than common diseases on the exam. And finally, having a tutor or someone who's experienced with USMLA exams that can tell you and make your job easier that when you're going through a subject, these are the high yield topics, focus on these, spend some time on the other ones. So I'm not saying don't study rare diseases or don't stay, study low yield concepts, but the allocation of time that you have here should not be equal to high yield and low yield concepts. Also, there are multiple videos on YouTube and I have multiple on my channel that go over the high yield concepts so you can have an idea of what is likely to show on the exam compared to other things. Another very important part of your studying that you can apply minimalism to is your environment. I can't stress enough how important your environment is in preparing you to study well and take the most out of the hours you're putting in. And let's start with the physical environment. Have in your environment only the things that you need. I know some students who spend hours and hours preparing their desk with so many pens and a computer and so many other things that they don't actually need. You need when you're studying your laptop or iPad or your book if you're studying from a physical book, a chair and a desk. If you have so many things around you, so much noise and clutter in the physical environment that actually creates distraction and does not help you focus on the material that you are studying. The digital environment, especially now when we're spending so much of our time and even studying on laptops, iPads, on our phones. So minimizing the distractions in our digital environment is key in focusing on the materials we are studying and preparing from. So turning off all notifications on your phone, on your laptop, on your iPad can help to minimize the distraction when you are studying. Close all unnecessary tabs. You can also prevent yourself from accessing certain apps on your phone, on your computer when you're studying to prevent you from going there. And once you're there, the algorithm just keeps you there. So if you're studying on your iPad and you have access to Instagram or TikTok, you can lock these apps while you're studying. So when you're studying, you know that you cannot access these apps. So now this is time that is fully dedicated to studying without any distractions. And this takes time and practice to be able to control yourself and not go to search for something on WhatsApp and now you're stuck in the conversation with your friends, a call from somebody, things that are totally irrelevant to your studying and just keeps you distracted and takes your mind off studying. You wanna get into that flow zone and I have a full video about that. I'll leave the link for that in the description below. You need to get into the flow state to be able to give your full potential to studying. And if you keep getting distracted by this or that, that will take you out from that flow state and it's gonna be even harder to get back in. And finally, the most important part about your environment is your mental environment. If your mind is on something else, some relationship issues or family issues, your mind will not be in studying. So you need to practice and master the art of separating all your problems before you get to studying. So you need to leave all this problem outside the room, you get in the studying room and nothing else distracts you mentally. And that's not easy. That's actually very difficult and probably is the most difficult part of everything that I'm going to talk about today. Because harnessing your mental power is the key to achieving success in, in life, not only on the USMLE exams. So some strategies that you can use to help you do that is meditation. Meditation is very powerful in helping you control yourself, control your mental power, journaling, talking to friends, talking to family, a therapist, yoga, whatever helps you achieve that goal. So to summarize this point, try to minimize the distractions and apply minimalism in your physical environment, in your digital environment, and in your mental environment. And that is one of the main goals of minimalism is to gain clarity and calm by reducing clutter and noise. Now let's go to the minimalist schedule. I'm sure you've seen so many videos about productivity, how to fight procrastination, so many ways and different techniques on how to make study schedule. I recommend you keep it simple. See how many days you have from now until your exam day, how many resources you have to go over, and then divide these resources across the days you have. Build a simple study schedule. And during the day, there are multiple ways, but see which one is most productive to you. Is it studying one hour and taking five minute break or studying three hours and taking an hour break? So you have to experiment because each person is different. And I have a detailed video on how to study 12 hours a day without burning out and another video on how to make 
step one study schedule and study plan and i'll leave the links for all these videos in the description below and by the way if you're looking for a whole course email course on how to ace the step one exam step two ck exam resources note taking strategies what are the high yield concepts very useful resources for you as a student going through this extremely stressful process we have made it easy for you we have a fully free course that you can sign up for and i'll leave the link for that in the description below and in the cards above once you put your information you will start getting weekly or uh, even two times a week emails that will guide you through this process and provide you with everything you need to know so you're not struggling to find the information that i had to go through and many others had to go through and if you need one-on-one -on -one help for building a study schedule study plan how to go through these resources or explain topics that you're having difficulty with we have phenomenal tutors that can help you achieve that and this service is 100 percent satisfaction guarantee which means if you're not happy we'll give you your money back no questions asked because our goal is to help you achieve your goal and achieve your success in passing these exams and you can sign up by clicking on the link in the card above or the description below and now let's go to the final point i want to talk about today which is the minimalism in note taking we've all gone through the process of painful note taking nobody likes to take notes but it's extremely essential because you don't want to go through the whole question back again 4000 questions or the whole book again so notes allow you to go through a much shorter version of that resource in the last few weeks of your studying so how to make note taking less frustrating how can you apply minimalism to note taking let's go to the definition of minimalism again it is focusing on what is important and getting rid of the rest so how can you apply that to note taking by taking note of what is really important not taking note of everything because if you're gonna take notes of everything in the question bank i would rather have you study the question bank again rather than go through the notes that is literally everything in the question mark so if you're taking 90 percent of the question back in your notes there is no point of your note your note has to be maybe 20 30 percent of the question mark so you save yourself around 70 to 80 percent of time when you go through these notes compared to the question mark also you have to find an efficient way of doing your notes so an electronic way maybe copy paste taking really really quick notes instead of having to write and write write by hand and i have a detailed video on how to make notes for your USMLE exams and I'll leave the link for that in the description below. I really did not know much about minimalism until I finished my USMLE exams. But looking back at the strategies and the ways I approached these exams, I really applied what minimalism stands for. And that's why I wanted to share this video with you, these thoughts with you, so you can minimize the clutter and noise and wasted time in your studying and prioritize what is important and what will help you achieve your goals on this exam. I would love to hear any thoughts you have about this video. Do you already apply some of these strategies when it comes to studying? Do you believe that it's helpful or not? I would love to hear your thoughts if you can drop it in the comments below and make sure to sign up for the free email course that I told you about in which we will share all the secrets we have about the USMLE exams, all the strategies you need to know for step one and step two CK and it's fully free. Just put your name and email in the link that I will leave in the cards above and the description below and you will start getting all these free resources delivered to your inbox. If you found any value in this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and once you subscribe, you will have a drop down list in which you can turn on the notifications so you can get notified whenever I post future videos on my YouTube channel. We will start posting more and more content related to specific topics about the USMLE exams that explains subjects like neurology, immunology, all the difficult high yield concepts that are commonly tested on the USMLE exams. We will make more and more videos about that so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that out. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in and good luck on your exam. Peace.